Hello, my name's John Denny, and I've been here 36 years. And this neighborhood and this house have come a long way in 36 years. This was an abandoned property when I bought it. It had been empty for four years, and four years of neglect and weeds and trash. I decided there was no point in trying to make a lawn, so after I hauled all the trash away, I decided just to start planting pretty things. And my pretty things have evolved over the years. My latest incarnation is the palm trees because I like Key West, I've been there a lot, and this house actually has a Key West look, except it's made out of brick. Now, when I came here, I knew of one palm tree that was hardy in Charlotte. Years later, I was up to 53 different kind of palms and 103 different, different, different ones. It was amazing. Of course, they were little plants, and I had to end up calling them out because they were too close and a lot of them weren't hardy, but I was going to try them anyway. I had date palms here at one time, but they got too tall and I couldn't protect them anymore. So I'm left with about 10 rock hard species that'll take any Charlotte winter. The, they've been down to five degrees and four days without breaking freezing. So, and if they can survive that, they can pretty much survive anything. Uh, just as an example, this plant here is called a needle palm. It doesn't grow a trunk like the one next to it, but it's a big bush palm that is hardy to 20 below zero. I know that's hard to imagine a palm tree that could take that, but they actually have these at Niagara Falls. Uh, the one next to it is a palmetto, the state tree of South Carolina. And it is the state tree because during the Revolutionary War, they built the coastal forts out of the logs of this tree. And it is so dense that when the British ships fired on the forts, the cannonballs just bounced off. And they kind of credit this tree with help winning the war. So that's why it's the state tree. I like a lot of things. I have uh, banana plants. These are dwarf bananas. They don't make edible fruit. There's only a few that do. These are actually little bananas, these little purple things. This is grown for the rather pretty flower it makes. And they form a nice little clump. Now over here is an unusual one that makes a cluster of little pink bananas. But what makes these fun is that they will actually peel themselves right on the tree. In a couple of days, it's gonna look like a monkey came along and peeled back the, the pink peel to re reveal the white fruit. They're not edible, but they're, they're cute. And these don't get huge. I like all kinds of plants. I was a botany major at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. I, for 20 years, I was the orchid curator at UNC Charlotte's Botanical Gardens. And uh, I just like everything. The problem is my yard is so small, I can't have everything. So I have to pick and choose and I'd hate to think of how many plants I've just pulled out because they were just in the way. Things got too big. Uh, this is a great plant for pollinators. You can see the bees are so busy, they don't care that I'm messing with them. But uh, this is an aster, and these are zinnias, and these are Mexican sunflowers, and the bees like everything. What I like about this yard is there's always something going on. In the dead of winter, I've got green trees because they're palm trees and they never lose their leaves. In the spring, starting in February, this yard is a mass of daffodils and crocuses and other little small dainty early spring plants. In March, it becomes a sea of tulips and I have to replant them every year because tulips are not hardy here. They're a one-shot deal. But I 
spend two days planting 1,200 bulbs, and I use an auger on a drill. I don't dig them by hand. <laughs> and uh, so that's the big show in March. Everyone likes this plant. This is a, called a Japanese climbing fern. It is a fern. It climbs, obviously. And uh, it's hardy down to 20 degrees, and then it freezes back, and then it comes roaring back the next year. Be aware, this is an invasive, so you have to be careful. Uh, it wants to grow wherever the spores land, as you can see along here. I've got hundreds of them. This just really looks really nice. I pulled it back and did go all the way across the front, but I do get a lot of compliments on it. The wisteria was the first plant I got for this house because I was appalled that I came south from Ohio and had a southern house that didn't have any wisteria. So I went down to the end of the street and yanked some up and planted it, and here it is, 36 years later, still going. And it's, it's a lot to take care of because it grows three feet a week and you have to prune it back. But it's almost October now and it's done for the season. So I won't have to mess with it until next April. Here's a little botany lesson for everybody. These are cycads. People call them sago palms, but they're no more a palm than that oak tree is over there. These go back to the age of the dinosaurs. These are conifers. These make cones, as opposed to palm trees that actually make flowers. So these uh, are not palms, but people call them sagos. There's two different kinds here. They're both hardy. And these been in the ground for 20 some years. This big palm here is called a jelly palm. It makes fruits that get about the size of a ping pong ball. They're bright red orange and they're kind of tasty, but they have a big hard seed in them. But you can make a tasty jelly with them. And my supervisor at school did it one year and it was actually quite tasty. This here is variegated jasmine. It's a true jasmine. It makes little jasmine flowers in the spring, but this is grown because of the pretty variegated leaves. Uh, they come out pink, then they turn white, then they become variegated, then they become green. And it forms a nice ground cover and the neighbors like it so much that they're training it to continue over on their side. This is my favorite tree. It's a weeping cherry, and when I planted it in 1992, that's what I planted. And as you can see, it's gone from this to this. And it was a lot prettier, but Duke Power had its way with it a few years ago, and it may never recover. But it blooms pink, and it weeps and it's really, really a traffic stopper when it's in full bloom. And when the petals start to fall and it's windy, it's like it's snowing. The whole ground is covered. It's really kind of fascinating. This area is more of your typical southern garden with azaleas, only these aren't the azaleas you see in most houses. These are native azaleas, which means they go deciduous, losing their leaves but they bloom early and they're just gorgeous. And uh, there's another needle palm. This is a saw palmetto that you might've heard about. And uh, I've got lots of ferns, daylilies, and all kinds of stuff. This is one of the only original plants to the house. This is a hydrangea that was here when I moved here. This is another one of my palmettos. Uh, when I planted it, the top was here. That was in 04. So you can see how it's gone from there to where it is now in 18 years. It's hard to believe. Most people believe you can't grow palms in Charlotte, but I've got 10 proven winners right here. So take a chance.
And this is my Nomo backyard. Because we have so many parties here, we decided to do a concrete yard with garden spaces, which makes it easy for anybody to come in. There's no steps up or steps down. You can roll a wheelchair from here all the way down to the tiki bar. Uh, we'll start here with one of my favorite things. This is a South Carolina longleaf pine from whence your bales of pine needles come from. Uh, I've had this for over 15 years, and when I planted it, this is what I planted. This is how they start. They're just cute little things. And I was with my supervisor on a field trip with the students at the, you know, in South Carolina where these grow. And I was trying to pull one out of the ground. He says, you'll never get that out of the ground. It has too big a tap root. Well, I tugged and I pulled and pop, came right up. And then he looked and said, well, it's never going to live because you broke the tap root. Well, here it is. It lived. And uh, I just think it's cute. I like cute plants. They don't have to be anything special. They just have to be cute. <laughs> so this is the most common palm you'll see in Charlotte. This is the good old reliable windmill palm comes from China, loves our red clay because that's what they have in China where this grows. And that was planted in 1995 as a plant that tall. The most asked about tree, even more than the palm trees, is what's known as a monkey puzzle tree. It's an aracaria. It goes back to the dinosaurs as well. It's also a cone bearer and it makes a real taste, real nice fruit that the monkeys want to get to, but they're puzzled on how they can because every part of that tree is prickly. Even the fruit is prickly. And uh, so that's how it got its name. It's from Chile. And when the fruits are ripe, it'll make hundreds of pine nuts that are, when roasted, are quite tasty. Mine is a female tree and it produced cones for the first year, but there's no male trees around, so they didn't get pollinated, which is kind of a shame. <laughs> so we can go this way and look at some stuff. This is longleaf clematis. It blooms in February and March, and it has beautiful smelling white flowers. It's one of the first things to bloom, and a late freeze really won't hurt it which is another plus. This is more of my aster. I've got tick seed. This is summer phlox coming to an end. This is a variegated bamboo. And of course, the obligatory fish pond. No, it's not koi pond. Koi are too big for something this small. Those are just Walmart goldfish. A lot of things just start here on their own, like these ferns. I never planted these ferns. They just came up on their own, as did this moss that's starting to grow. We really like it and hope it keeps going. I do try to be a responsible gardener. I have my compost bin over here. I have different bamboos in the yard, but this is the most interesting. If you look at the stems, they swell out at the nodes. I call it knobby kneed bamboo, just to have a funny name. It's from China and has a scientific name that I've never been able to even attempt to pronounce. But this is about as tall as it gets. It grows in a clump and it's, it's just a, another fun plant. This here is a, an arum. This is related to the giant one that every now and then produces the big stinky flower that you've read and seen on TV. This will never do that. It makes a stinky flower, but nothing like the giant one from Sumatra. But these are hardy here. This is another one. And this is our tiki bar. 
The Tiki Bar sits on what used to be a garage. I didn't want to tear out the concrete, so I just put pavers over it. And I repurposed an old piano into the back bar. In its day, it was an old player piano that I restored in the 70s. And it used to be the highlight of my big New Year's Eve parties until it started going bad again. And I just didn't have the will or wherefore all to rebuild it. So we turned it into part of the Tiki Bar. This little deck is what used to be my orchid greenhouse. And uh, once I got my job at UNC Charlotte taking care of the orchids, I didn't need to do it at home because now I was getting paid to do it. So I sold the greenhouse and we decked over the old floor and made a little deck for the tiki bar. And you saw the little bananas in the front yard. These are the monster bananas back here. I'm six foot, so you can see just how big these puppies are. They are hardy. They don't have to be dug up and brought in. They can freeze down to the ground and come roaring back and do this all in one season. Unfortunately, these don't make an edible, edible banana either. But they're just fun and tropical and I've always liked tropical plants, so that's why I have them. I've had banana trees since I was 16, even in Ohio. I've always liked tropical plants with big showy leaves. This is another one of my favorite. This is Chinese rice paper plant. They make the finest rice paper from the pulp that they make out of the stems of this plant. It makes a real interesting flower if we don't have an early freeze. This is uh, more of my bamboo I'm just using for screening from the big nasty street light across the way. Uh, it's a clumping bamboo. There's two kinds of bamboo, the kind that run 100 feet in all directions and the clumpers that stay confined. And that's what these are. A lot of people freak when you tell them you have bamboo, but you have to have the right bamboo. It makes a good screen, it's evergreen, and that's what makes it work. This is another palmetto, like the great big ones you've seen in the front. This is how they start. This one's just beginning to form a trunk. From henceforth, this will grow about a foot a trunk a year and go up and up and up. But it takes about 10 years before they actually start doing that. This is why they don't fall over in hurricanes. You've probably seen pictures of them in a hurricane with the leaves going like that, but the trunk's just sitting there. That's because it's 10 feet in the ground. It ain't going anywhere. And that's why it takes these so long to get going because they're busy going down before they start going up. The monkey puzzle also has an interesting bark. It peels itself and exposes some real pretty new wood underneath. It's called exfoliating, but it, your uh, crepe myrtles will do the same thing. But uh, the good thing is the, the nasty needles that were on here have come off now. So the monkey can get up to here, but whoa, if he wants to come out on a stem, he's gonna be sorry, because that's where those sharp needles are. This tree in the wild can get three feet in diameter and 150 feet high. They use it for timber. So we're coming up the back side here. Again, we're kind of nearing the end of the season. I've got some late blooming stuff. Got lantana and this rothica. And these uh, late sunflowers will bloom in October. So I guess that's, that's about it. This is my yard and it's its prettiest in the last week in February. The last weekend of March is when the tulips are typically in bloom. I put a thousand in every year to guarantee a good show. And you're welcome to come by and visit. <laughs>